السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشى ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم So number one before I forget which I just did to myself everyone's phone at least on silence and it is live streamed so if we cannot record here also it's already live streamed that's why I requested everyone remove everything you're drinking what is going to happen in 45 minutes if you did drink anything nothing let alone eating so everyone please I really mean it um, it's it's not only for me but also for you you're not going to learn anyhow I'm going to quote a, a verse from the Quran and you're eating and drinking Jazamullah khair I mean it's a hospitality but um, it's just something I learned from my teachers, especially teachers of Tuskia. It's amazing what it does to the heart. It's a beautiful mosque. I remember I was here. When were we here? Before, definitely before the COVID. Was, was I in Jeddah studying? Yeah, many years ago. And I remember, and this is the reason I said yes right away, because it was beautiful and still beautiful. The only reason I said yes when they reached out to me, I was like, oh, this beautiful masjid, I'm going. And if I know what I did, <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, I kept saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me, Ya Rabbi Ameen. So again, everyone is settled, phones are off, uh, no phone, no drink, no whatever, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. And I like it, people are bringing their notes. So I was asked to talk about Prophet family, no, Prophet household. Is that what you want me to talk about? Since we are all women, this is beautiful. So let's, let's pick up, how many youth we have here? What is, alaykum what is the, uh, how many of you have TikTok? Of course, right? That's okay, it's not a bad thing, it depends on what you see in it. Tayyip, what is the most challenging thing for a youth growing up in LA? Indecency. I love that. Yeah, what I, what I am seeing in, in uh, your right, it's very different from other places of the country. Let's put it this way. I'm not talking about back home or Mecca. I'm talking about the States. One of the challenges, you probably don't feel it because you live here. Some of you probably were born, raised here, or been here for 20, 30 years. One of the issues here is plenty of blessings in this in this state. You don't feel it. You know what is the biggest blessing? Absolutely. The weather. That's why it's very expensive. Well, what does the weather has to do with this everything? Say that again. Less clothing. Well, everybody else, if you come to St. Louis in August, it's 100 degrees. What the, what the weather does, and this does to the Muslims before anybody else. Don't you think we are immune, by the way? Don't you think you are immune? Or not you, but don't you think because we are Muslim, just because we are Muslim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us comfort, it's a test. So when you have everything you want, for example, this beautiful masjid, beautiful, subhanAllah, right? And then you have a place. Number one is not the masjid. You have a masjid, but they allow you to come as women. Let alone they gave you the... This, I'm assuming this is the main musalla. Am I right? Okay. So they gave you the main musalla. And it's all for us. And it's beautiful, comfortable, temperature-wise. The, the, where you are sitting, there's chairs. You can, all these are ni'mah. So when I have this 24-7, the weather is 24-7 is beautiful. I mean, it's two weeks, got hot, everybody is complaining. I don't know about LA, but we were, uh, I was like, it came to 90. But what happens is, the more ni'mah you have, the more blessing you have, the more spoiled you get, and the more entitled you become. 
and anything that doesn't go your way, you start complaining. And the more you complain, now connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you complain, actually complain, and this is for the youth and for everybody else. Complain equal what? Absolutely. Lack of gratefulness. When I complain, literally equal lack of gratefulness. Let alone what I don't really have any substance to complain about. Somebody may Allah protect you all, someone has cancer, and they complain. You can look at it and say, yeah, they have cancer. It's a death penalty. They are in pain. They're taking chemo. But when I complain because the temperature is 90 instead of 75, or the temperature became 48 instead of 75, I have a huge problem. And I'm talking again, us Muslims. So one of the issues, one of the challenges I am seeing here in California is because of the comfort zone. It's very comfortable, everything is available. It's huge, it's big, you have the beauty around you. You wanna go to the beach, I don't know about here, but there you drive 20 minutes. You wanna go for hiking, another 20 minutes. I always like, since I moved, I was like, why does people wanna go out for vacation? What's vacation gonna give you? Other than you probably go and see family. But what vacation other places will give you? This is all ni'mah. Plus, you probably also don't know this, or you know it, but you don't know the value, because again, you live here, is the number of masajids here, one close to the other, all are amazing, amazing qurra. Literally, this morning, I was like, do I go to this one or to that one? Because all of them reads amazing. Again, you don't know the value of that because you're used to it. Like one of my friends, I, I just recorded one of, the, one of the imams and I sent it to her. And she said, what is that? P, uh, people are in these masajids have PhD, the imams has PhD. I was like, no, this is the norm. This is the norm. So the more I get all this, the more spoiled or rotten I am. The less grateful I am. And what will happen? This is where I'm coming now. It's now connected with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any hafidah in this room? Anybody have memorized Quran in this room? No, I'm talking about hafidah. Like somebody who knows Quran very well. May Allah make you. I mean, nothing impossible for Allah. If he can give me a temperature 75 the whole year, he can make me memorize Quran. Memorize this one. It's in Surah Ibrahim. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This one you all know it. If you are grateful, I'll give you more. And I'm not worried about this. And I worry about part two, because it's the same verse. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ If you are grateful, I'll give you more. What happens if I'm not? And no one think of that. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ And if you are ungrateful, my punishment, and he said severe, now who's talking? Allah. It's not you and me and us like, be careful. You, don't, you haven't seen me when I am upset. You know, we say this. This is you and me. Whatever I can do is you can do it too. But when my and your creator, the Qawiyul Aziz, the all strong, the all might, Al Qadr, Al Muqtadr, and he says, my punishment is severe. What should this do to your heart? Talk about the hearts now. What should this, when you read this verse, do to your heart? First thing, there's so many things, but number one, am I that person? Am I that person that I am ungrateful? Who can in this room, and the camera is not on you, the camera is on me, so it's okay. Tell me, or say it, and Allah knows. You know what? I am ungrateful. Show me hands. Everybody should raise a hand. If you have not complained, I'm sure everybody complained for something today. And we have a roof. 
and we have food and we are healthy and we can come and we have masajid and we can practice our deen, right? And we are safe. As a Rasul salatu salam, man asbaha aminan fi sirbi, mu'afan fi badani, yamluku quta yawmi, ka'annama huyizat lahu dunya. Whomsoever wake up in the morning, youth, listen to this. And let not very youth listen to this. Whomsoever woke up in the morning, and we all did, because we're here. Three things he said. Mu'afan, actually first he said, aminan fi sirbi, safe. No bombs on my head, no one putting a gun on me, alhamdulillah. Aminan fi sirbi, mu'afa fi badani, healthy in his body. I can walk, I can talk, I can come. Yamluku quta yawmi, has enough food for one day. Let's open our fridges and our freezers. What did he say? So all of us in this room have this. Anybody doesn't have this? I doubt it. I just saw a homeless and I was like, okay, welcome to LA. Right? We're not. He said, if you have these three, كَأَنَّمَا حُيِّزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا as if whole dunya, all this life, was given to him. And every woman in this room, myself is number one, we are under this category. I have all dunya. I have all dunya. What are we complaining about? What does the youth complain about? And I'm going to take every age. Don't you think I'm coming for you only? It's every age. What do you complain about? What does my nieces and nephews complain about? Big deal, disaster, end of the world. What is it? Honestly, when you talk to them, they're very serious about it. What is it? If she's 13, 11, 12, or 13, and the parents are a little bit strict, and they have not given her a phone yet. Oh. End of the world. Am I right? Am I right? One of the disasters, one of the things, wherever I go, it's like, can you please talk to them? I was like, what is it? And why don't I have a phone? I was like, why do you need a phone? Right? Teach me. I mean, when I was your age, there was nothing called phone, period. So I didn't even have to struggle. But why do you need to have a phone? I still yet waiting for a reason. That's youth. Second complaint, she has phone. Alhamdulillah. Now you have the phone. What is the complaint now? What is the complaint? I, I, I want to hear it from the youth. I don't have internet. Or I don't have data exactly, or data as we call it. Rabbi, really. Really. Now why do you need the data? All my friends has it. So move this. Come to the, those in college. In college, alhamdulillah, healthy. Parents are paying for that college. Most of, what are they complaining about? Say that again? No. No, they don't. They, they pass this because everybody in college has to have a laptop. Now, we're done with that. We're done with the internet. We have, every age has a, Car, no, they have a car, but it's not new. The car is 2014. What a huge problem. <laughs> and it's not electric car. I don't have my room. I have to share it with a roommate. And add. Okay, let's come to the married woman. Now, now the room is silent. If you are married, you're complaining about marriage. If you have children, you're complaining about the children. If you have no children, you're complaining about the husband. If you are not married, you're complaining why I'm not married. If you are in college, you're complaining about college. If you didn't get accepted in college, you're complaining about I didn't get college. If you don't have a postgraduate 
grade or degree your you know what sometimes i say like when i'm alone and i want you all to feel this i was like subhanallah i'm not allah none of us but i'm just thinking and if allah is looking at me you know what he will say to me what else i do to you so i don't hear a complaint in a second what else أنا وال أنا والجن والإنس في أمر عجيب. This is a, a um, حديث قدس. May Allah make me remember the exact word. If not, this is what what it it means. Allah says, me, me, Allah, and the jinn and the ins. So the human and jinn in a so strange relationship. طيب. أرزق ويعبد غيري. I give, and they are thankful to someone else. Is it true? That's not my word. Actually, no. أَخْلُقُ وَيُعْبَدُ غَيْرِي الحمد لله الله made me remember. I create, and they worship someone else. أَرُزُقُ وَيُحْمَدُ غَيْرِي I give, and they are thankful to someone else. I did it. It's me, my planning, my study. I raised them. I worked so hard for them. Don't we say all this? شرهم إلي صاعد وخيرهم إلي وخيري إليهم نازل. I send all the good thing for them. Send it down, and they send back all the evil. It's a long hadith, but I just want you to feel this little bit. This little bit. And this is why Allah said in Surah Sabah, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِ يَشَّكُورٌ Very few of my servants are grateful. That's why I told you, Alhamdulillah, يعني, you, I, I did see a good number of hands. قَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِ يَشَّكُورٌ Very few of us are grateful. How many of you, when everyone asks you, how are you, say, Alhamdulillah. The youth will say, good. And I was like, always joke with them. I was like, what does good mean? And they look at me. I was like, and I said, I know what good means. But what does good mean with Allah? How are you? What is big deal of saying Alhamdulillah? What is the big deal? It's Alhamdulillah. One second. Sayyidina Umar used to walk and look at people. And you say, Kayfa asbahd? How are you this morning? And people say whatever. And then finally somebody says, Asbahtu ahmidullah alak. I am this morning telling you I am so grateful to Allah. He said, that's why I was asking. I wanted to hear it. And same thing, adults, right? How are you? Bi khair. I'm good. The same thing, but it's in Arabic. Or, oh, don't tell me, don't ask me. One of my worst days. What is the worst day? Yawm al Qiyamah. Did you feel the earthquake here? You didn't feel it. It was in the north. Did Allah send you a message that says, in five minutes you are coming to me? Can't He do that? So let's, let's be, number one, honest with ourselves. Allah knows, truthful with Allah, that we are not. But that doesn't mean I can't change. Can I change? Can I change? I want to hear it. Yes. لا, inshallah, هذه, which inshallah? You know there's two inshallahs? So sad, so painful. One of my nieces literally sent it to us in the group. And she said, when you invite Muslim to a function, actually, no, it was when you are inviting Muslims to, an, to a function. And she sent the invitation card, the RSVP. The RSVP says what? It's either yes or no, right? Yes and no. And third, inshallah. 
so painful. You know why? It is funny, of course, but I was like, Subhanallah. Abillahi wa ayatihi wa rusulihi tastanzi'oon. It's by Allah and his verses. And the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, you're mocking. Allah said this in Surah Tawbah. Because why? Why this is mocking? But where did it come from reality? Because Allah says, لا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله. Friday, Kaf. Don't you say to anything you are doing tomorrow unless you say, inshallah. What does it mean? I made every preparation. I am coming. I am going. But I know for sure that it is not in my hand unless Allah wills. Now, if Allah doesn't will, even if I planned it, the best plan is not going to happen. That's what inshallah means. What do we say? I don't want to come. I'm not coming. Inshallah. And everybody turned to the other She's not coming. Change. And, then, and again, I don't know if it's only women, but again, this is our, what I deal with most. Let's change. Change. Let's be the Muslim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see you and me. Grateful. Truthful. And I'm talking about truthful with him. <laughs> We're not going to talk about truthful with each other. But truthful with him. When I say I'm doing it, I'm not going to say inshallah. I'm going to say I'm doing it if Allah wills. Meaning the end, the, 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 the moving moment is through him subhanahu. So gratefulness. Be grateful ladies. How many of you, again show me hands, young and, and not very young, changed after COVID. Alhamdulillah. In which way? A more positive way. In which way? Getting more closer to Allah. In which way? You know why I keep asking this? Because unless I pinpoint it, I'm not going to learn. Tawakkul. Everybody use this word. I was like, what is tawakkul? What is this tawakkul? Taqwa, all these big names, big words. So what is closer to Allah mean? Give me one example, real. Yeah, I mean it, real. Say that again. Can't hear you because of the uh, street is very loud here. People got discipline, really? So people changed after COVID. Say that again. So COVID was a test. It's the same story. So COVID was a test. Absolutely. Absolutely. What did we learn from the COVID? What did we change? I'll give you an example. How many of you attended Jumu'at, right? And Probably, for whatever the reason, you couldn't. But most of you, I'm assuming, I think everybody, normally you attend Jum'ah. Right? Think of Jum'ah before COVID. What does the woman do after Jum'ah? The Imam said, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. What does the woman do? It becomes a party. Right? That's before COVID. Then Allah came and tested us. Two years. You are not coming to my house. You're not coming to my house. It's his house. He made the decision, like you. You don't want to invite me. I don't get upset. It's your home. And then he said, I'm going to give them another chance. So come. Did we come different? Did we come different? Dress different? Speak different? More focus? I see a lot of you are doing this because it's true. Nothing. Nothing. I'm not saying everybody. I'm sure some changed, but the majority of the ummah, let alone the majority of humanity, because this COVID did not affect the Muslims only, affected humanity. Did we sat and took a breath and said, why did this happen to us? 
Why did Allah allow this something that nobody yet knows what it is to, sh to destroy, to shut off the world? You will never forget the first three months. Empty roads, right? Wash your hand and everything is delivered to your home and you don't even open the door, right? And everything washed and clean. Why? This is what I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to connect everything together. I'm reaching to the same point I started with. Why? What did he want to tell me? So many, but give me one. One. I'm sorry? So everything in Allah's hand, absolutely. Did I learn it? No, I'm just talking about this one. Did I learn everything is from Allah? No. So why do you get upset when you lose your phone? And you get so upset. It's in Allah's hand. It's his phone. Qaddar Allah ma Allah give or Allah take. No. Did I change? No. Let's take another example. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought COVID and took it? Huh? So to be thankful to the water, to going out, to go and visit my friend, to come to the masjid, go for Umrah, go for Hajj, to be thankful. Am I thankful? Back to the same where I started. Am I? Are we? No, we didn't change. Why did Allah bring or brought COVID? Give me another reason. Yes. To turn to him, to turn to him, right? It's a test. People were dying right and left. I don't know if you have seen it. But come in my shoes in the hospital and what did we see? Ya Allah, did we turn to him? Did we turn to him after? Not a during. Of course during, we had no other option. But after, is my salah better after COVID? Is my dress code better after COVID? Am I more focused on my akhirah than my dunya after COVID? I'm not talking about one or two person. I'm talking about communities, Muslim ummah, let alone the whole humanity. Yes or no? No. No. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ Allah said this in Surah Al-An'am. I call it the COVID ayah. This is me. And he's telling the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. It's an ayah to make him, to, to, um, like to make the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam feel better. Like don't worry about them. Let them do whatever they want to do. Because he said, we have sent to people before you. Prophets. أخذناهم بالبأساء والضراء. And we tested them. Ba'sa and darra. Ba'sa is usually diseases, famine, and darra, things they don't like. Why, Ya Allah? Why? He said it. La'allahum yitadarra'un. So they turn back to Allah. And they beg Him. And they submit to Him. Darra'a has a lot of meaning. But you ask Him, you obey Him, you submit to Him. Tayyip? Look at the next one. Falawla idh ja'ahum ba'suna tadarra'un. If it was only when the test came in, when the disease came in, they submit. وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Nay, their hearts were so hard. Now look what happened. This is why we need to be so scared. وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And shaitan make them feel, made them feel that they are doing perfect. I changed, I'm closer to Allah. Now I know all these big words we say. طيب. Now Allah says this, this is the third. He has three verses. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ When they forget what we tested them with. What, what do you think will happen? You'll be so surprised. Huh? 
فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء. We gave them everything they want. So don't you think when Allah gives me everything and I am not obedient to Allah, I am not doing what He wants me to do, that this is a sign. Alhamdulillah. No. This is so scary. Because He says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا They forgot. We forgot COVID, nothing. Back to where we were. If not, may Allah forgive me, worse. فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We gave them everything they want. Everything. أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ The door of everything. Now when Allah says the door of everything, the doors of everything, what is this everything? What is it? Everything can think of you. You can, your mind can think. And beyond. فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ now they are so happy and enjoying the phone, iPhone 14, and the internet, and the car, and the, everything we were talking about. What will happen? We took them suddenly. And they became مبلسون, they became, they lost hope in being saved. Do you know why I call it ayat, the verse of COVID now? Because we are now in the third verse. He opened everything back. Even now, uh, masks, you don't know, it's, it's uh, optional. Many hospitals, it's optional. He brought it and he took it out. Yes, there is vaccine, everything. These are all, he did it. I mean, he could have easily made the vaccine doesn't work. He could have easily made no vaccine. And he gave us two, almost two years. And then he said, you know what? Okay, I'll bring it all back to you. The only part of the ayah is left is the last one. I don't want to be that. I don't want this come. When this come, I am from the first group. I want to be from the people who are, have changed. I learned, learned from the lesson. What is the sign you're mature? What is the sign you're mature? You know, what is the famous word we, see, we say, those of you who were born and raised in this country, what do you say? Been there, done that. It's a very common statement, right? Been there, done that. I was like, okay, not again. So are we been there, done that? For COVID? For the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took and gave back and gave more? And gave more? And where are we with him? Where is our relationship with him? Again, young and old. And don't tell me, I'm not talking about the five salah only. And I needed COVID. And all these people died. And I'm still struggling with my five salah. My, my relationship with Allah is stronger. What does that mean? My salah is better. What does that mean? That's it. That's it. And fasting Ramadan from Ramadan to Ramadan. And I go for vacation. Allah knows what happens. Let me get invited to weddings and Allah knows what I'm going to see. Back to where we started. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ You're grateful, I'll give you more. And if you are not, and he didn't say what is the punishment. That's so scary. So when Allah doesn't say what it is, it's like when somebody says, you know, just wait to see when I get upset. I'm like, oh God, what is going to happen? And this is human beings. So when he, subhana, say this, you really need to be very careful. We need to change, ladies. This is what I, literally, I have two messages wherever I'm traveling these days. Since COVID, since Allah brought us back, I was like, ladies, learn from the experience. The smart people who what? You hear this all over. If you are of these people who follow mind or soul, right? And you, talk, you follow these people who teaches you how to grow or how to do, how to change. They tell you, learn from your mistakes. And you will never be successful unless you fail. This, you hear it again and again. So what did we learn? 
each one of you, what did you learn? What changed in you in your relationship with Allah as an individual? And don't tell me I used to pray three times and now I'm five times. And all these people, a million people died in the United States. So instead of three became five? How can I guarantee it's not going to happen again? Can you guarantee? How can I guarantee I'm not going to be with those people who died when it comes back again? The only way for you and me, bi'idhnillah, to prevent disasters from happening is, you know, by what? By obeying him and be grateful. There's no other way. No other way. Obey him and be grateful. Obey him and be grateful. But I am the same person. Square one, by square one, 2021 in March. Who, remember, who forgot that day? 24th of March where everything was shut off. I remember this because everything in the hospital was canceled. All surgeries, everything. Ya Allah, what days we lived. And this is ma asaba min musibati. There's more than one, but the one I'm, I'm referring to. Ma asaba min musibati illa bima kasabat aidikum wa yafu an kathir. Every calamity that happens on this earth is as a result of what people did. And he forgive a lot. This is in Surah Shura. Meaning, I'm sorry, in a room. Meaning, every problem you see, you see, is, could be, of my sin. My missing a fajr, and this is for everybody, could not affect me yet or my family yet but could affect the person who is homeless this could be because of my it's a chain in allah's eyes and that's what he said Ma asaba, any calamity that happens on this earth is a result of the people's sins and the biggest sin or one of the biggest sins is being ungrateful ungrateful when you travel abroad i know how many of you travel abroad you know how they know that we live in the west because we complain if you travel a lot and you talk with people not to travel you know for a week or you go only for vacation you live and you see they know because we complain that doesn't mean everything is going to be the same way but at least, Ya Rabbi, make it easy. Ya Allah, please forgive me. That's the personal relationship with Allah. So let's change, ladies. Let's be grateful to the massage that Allah gave us. Let's respect it. Let's come dressed properly. What I'm seeing here, I haven't seen it somewhere else. Honestly. Yeah. Woman. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about women, young and old. People who were born, raised here, people who came from back home. This is the house of Allah. It's dress code. It's not my house. You come to my house and you go to people's house and then you see sometimes signs on the door. What the sign says, please take off your shoes. Right? Is that their right? Absolutely. It's their house. That's their house. And some are very courteous. They put you a shoe cover or some people put even like slippers. But that's their house. And what they are asking is not haram. And me as a guest, my duty and their right is I do what they asked me. What about the Aziz or Hakim? The Almighty, the All Wise, it's his house. Every masjid is his house. And why did Allah put masajid? So we eat and drink and meet everybody who talk. Who, who, yeah, no. No. It's number one. What? It's basically to worship Allah. Only. Dress code. Dress code. I, I can't believe people come and pray and they, please forgive me, but I'm seeing it everywhere. Tied jeans. And it's so hard for me because this woman came to the masjid. I was like, your salah is unacceptable. 
Because your aura is not covered. This is the basics. This basics fiqh. Or the hair is half of it is shown. Half. Half. And then the, the, if it's a long hair, all coming from the back. The salah is unaccepted. Let alone no respect to the imam. I, I've seen things. Is, the imam is in Jumu'ah. Why did you come for Jumu'ah if you want to look at your phone? And literally doing this. Next to me, doing this. What is this? On the social media? On Friday? Why did you come? It's not an obligation for the woman. Stay home and do this. What a distraction. How about if somebody look at you and learn from you? And that person, somebody else learned from it. Be grateful. Respect the masjid. Sign of taqwa. That you glorify the symbols of Allah. Adhan. That's another story. Adhan is going and woman doing what? Doing what? Talking. Loud. And what did he t teach me, alayhi salatu wassalam? You, I'm sure everybody in this room knows what I'm going to say. What, what, is, what is it supposed to be? Number one, listen. And then when he gives you the break, is to repeat. Yeah, alhamdulillah, everybody knows it. Why don't we do it? Because we are ungrateful. Back again. Because I'm ungrateful. I don't, I don't see the adhan as a ni'mah. He took it away from us for a year and a half. We didn't hear it live in a masjid. You know when I first went to Umrah last year, exactly this time? First time after COVID. You know what I said when I first looked at the haram? Before I entered. I was like, what did we do, Ya Allah? That you didn't invite us. What did we do? It's your house. And how do I guarantee you'll invite me again? What should I do? Teach me, show me. So you don't say this is it. Let her go back. This is what we need to establish, ladies. The, I call it the private, personal relationship with Allah. It's not only when I need. Ya Allah, give me. I want a husband for my daughter, and I, now my dua is nothing like before. I want to go to this college, never me. Literally, I have youth text, text me. I'm like, they never text me, ask me a question. Tomorrow she has an interview. What is the dua? I, of course I give it, but I was like, if I was Allah and I am not, but if it was me and you only remember me when you need me, or I only remember you when I need you, what are you going to say about me? What are you going to say about me? Opportunistic. She only remember me what she needs me. Guess what? I'm not going to even answer. But Allah is kareem. Subhanah. And he keep giving us. Let's not, let us not abuse it. Be grateful. Count your blessings as we all say. And glorify house of Allah. The symbols of Allah. And I'm talking about people who practice and people who are still struggling to practice. People are wearing hijab, and people who are still struggling. May Allah make it easy for everybody. Because I see what I shared with you is from everybody, by the way. Literally today, next to me, in Jumu'ah, what I told you. In khutbah. And I left, I did very quick sunnah because I couldn't focus. I couldn't, I wanted to enjoy the masjid, you know. Forget it. It, forget it. It's a party behind me. And sometimes I say, may Allah reward the men. And I don't blame them when they complain about the woman. I'm a big fan of women coming to the masjid, by the way. Don't know, because this is the only place where we're going to learn our deen. We see Muslims. But I'm just saying, is if the, and like here, alhamdulillah, you're up and you close the windows. But some massage, like where I was this, this Jumu'ah, it's the mezzanine is open. You hear the men and they hear you. So be grateful, ladies. Go back to Allah. Count your blessings. Start changing real, not changing words. Change real. I don't know how much left. I don't know if another COVID is going to come. And he tests us three times with, during COVID. Every few months, a new one comes up. I was like, what is this? 
And finally he said, I'm going to give them another good chance. And he did. And we are living in it. That's why we are here in the masjid. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us with al-qaleel. As Sayyidina Umar used to make this dua. Because Allah said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Very few of my servants are grateful. He used to make dua for himself. He said, Ya Allah, make me of those few. And make, may Allah make us all of those few. Know the value of what you have. Be grateful back to the source of the, of the blessings. And he, alhamdulillah, you are dealing with the generous. The generous. One thing from you, ten and more. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our shortcomings. Jazakumullahu khairan. It's already nine o'clock. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila an. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. You're a great people. You listen very well. So I'm going to give you ten more minutes. Any question? Any question relevant? Yes, please. Your, your patience, your lack of patience. Okay, so lack of patience. Sabr. And because we live in a very comfortable life. Comfortable zone. So the more we are comfortable, you know what's the, you don't think of it this way. But you get into the car these days. What do you do? Nothing. You press one button, everything is working. Right? You move your leg, everything is working. And it's too hot, one button, and becomes better. It's too cold, another button, and it becomes beautiful. The phone rings, one button, and you talk to people. Am I right? So what happens, I got used to everything goes, please forgive me, my way. So if, if the phone doesn't work, end of the world. I'll give you an example, true, it happened with me. This is when I was studying in Jeddah, and Jeddah is extremely hot. It's very hot, hot and humid. Literally, you choke. So I, I used to go at two o'clock to my Quran teacher. So there, at that time, we were not able to drive, so I had a driver. So he drops me, and it's one hour class, and then I go. And I used to say, you know what? Keep the car going, keep the car running, and turn on the air condition. It's very hot. Okay, so I go up, I come back, and I remember very well. And he is sleeping, sleeping, as if you are literally in the Ritz Carlton. And he just have the window lower. I get into the car. I I'm gonna choke. And then I was like, please turn the air condition. He looked at me. Because this man had never seen an air condition in his life. And I was like, what a test, what a lesson you gave me, Allah. I just came from learning his book. And he gave it to me. This is why we are lack of patience. Because it is everything, I call it the Burger King life. You know what's the Burger King meal life? You drive, you don't get out of the car, it's too difficult. You come in, you don't even say anything. You don't do anything. You say number one, you don't explain. If I explain, it's too hard. And then you come in, and he tells you, and you don't do anything, you just give the card. And then another window, and he gives you everything. You don't do anything, you just pull your hand, everything comes in. And then within five minutes, everything is done, and you are full, and you are full. And you enjoy it. Whether a burger came, McDonald's, any of the fast food. I'm, I'm not making a certain. But what is that? So if the person at the window is not there, what happens? I get so frustrated. Where is he? Or where is she? The reason of lack of sabr. Because we are again spoiled rotten. And those of you who live back home, South Africa, 
you know what is my favorite place in South Africa? You're all going to say, Safari, Cape Town. No, no. There is a place which is the, I've never seen poverty like I have seen there. And every time, it's in Pretoria. And every time I go, I was like, you have to take me there. I can't tell you. I can't. This is what you need. You need always to remind yourself, ma bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah. Whatever blessings you have, it's from Allah. And I need to be more grateful, and I need to make one dua for myself. I do it all the time. Ya sabur, saburni. Ya Allah, you are the patient. Give me patient. Give me patient. And learn not to give, that's the third thing, not to give yourself everything at once. This is Tazkiyah. Not everything yourself wants, you give it to it. I want to go and drink coffee. Why? Why? Literally, I, I was speaking to a youth recently. I have to go and study in the, in the library. Why? The house is beautiful. They have off. No, okay, fine. Go to bar, whatever, bars and novels. But I'm going to stop and take coffee. I was like, why? It's 10 o'clock. I can't study without coffee. What is it? Everything my nafs wants, I'm giving it. So when it doesn't come for whatever the reason, I get very frustrated. And by the way, this is all of us, not the youth only. It's all of us. All of us. This is what we need. That's why fasting is an amazing tool to get, make you more patient and everybody else in the room. Make sure, especially now with the Alhamdulillah, winter is coming and next week, time will change. At least, if you tell me, and I'm not just saying to you, if you tell me you really changed after COVID, show me your Monday and Thursday fasting. And if you usually fast Monday and Thursday, show me Siyam Dawood. Show me every other day. If you're already, alhamdulillah, before COVID, you pray five times a day, show me your Qiyam layl your night tahajjud. Show me your forgiveness to people. So ask Allah, fast more, and don't give your nafs everything at once. And then, and a lot of dua, and Allah will make you, absolutely. Bi'idhnillah. Yes. How do I know it's a blessing or it's a punishment? How do you react to it? That's a very common question. Uh, and this is actually Imam Ibn Qayyim said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's say, again, we live in the 2022, so this, I, I wake up and there is no phone, right? If I'm gonna say, Qaddar Allah ma sha'a fa'al, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree, whatever Allah decree will happen, then this is a blessing. And Allah is either make, giving me more rewards or elevating. If I'm gonna start from A to Z complaining and blaming everybody, that's a punishment. And this includes every test. And I'm just giving this as a simple, but every test you go through, you're grateful to Allah. And that doesn't mean I am happy with it. Oh, if you're happy with it, that's rida. Don't talk about it. That's way higher. But if I am patient and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, give me patient. I know it's your decree. I love it. I want whatever it is, but you're not complaining then that's not a punishment. If you say, why me? Let alone it's unfair. The golden word. Let everybody say it. Youth with parents, wives with husband, husband with wives, unfair. Then that's a punishment. Alrighty, so please advise about nail polish and come for salah. Where did this come from? The halal nail polish. You know, the, unless you really dig into the reasons of things, you're not going to understand it. So how many Muslims are in the world? Just give me a number. 1.7 billion? 60% of them are women. That's how it is. How many, how many now? 60% of 1.6 billion. Say 50% are young. You're talking about at least 100 million, if not more. 
So if I'm going to come and sell you a halal nail polish, how much money I made? Do I care about your salah? Do I care about your relationship with Allah? Why do I fall in this trap? One. Two. Why do you put a nail polish? Anyone answer me. And that includes when you are during the monthly period. Because when I see this, I was like, you didn't understand what Allah said. What is, why do we put a nail polish? Come on, we're all women. What? Exactly, to look beautiful. It's very nice. And why do you put makeup? I'm coming to it. Why do I put makeup? Why do I put makeup? Young and old, why? Why, why? I want to hear it. Exactly. I want to look beautiful, right? And makeup makes me look beautiful. Show my beauty or increase my beauty. Is that haram or halal? Just a second. Allah says, not, he didn't say cover. He said, don't show your beauty. Don't. لا يبدين زينتهم Allah said in Surah An-Nur Don't show your beauty So whether it is my cycle And I don't Allah gave me the permission not to pray And I'm putting the nail polish Whether it is the quote-unquote halal nail polish I am disobeying Allah Period Period Or, or putting makeup Or wearing tight and let alone coming to the masjid. Wallah, I keep saying this and I've said this many times in this talk. Yani, لَوْلَا Allah is Rahim. If Allah was not Rahim, I have no idea what will happen to us. وَلَوْ يُؤَخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا مِنْ دَابَّ If Allah will take people accountable to what they are doing, he will not have left anything moving on this earth. He said it twice in the Quran. I, unless we know the, the, the real meaning of the deen, it's our problem. Men and women, but I'm talking to women. We don't know that why he said that. What is the hikmah? What is the wisdom? It's not just don't do or do. It's why. So when I say, he said, don't show your beauty, fine. Before you leave the house, stand in front of that mirror, which we all do, and ask yourself one question. He's looking at me. He is looking at me. Is that how he wants me to leave? Is that what he said? A new answer, a new do. Period. Includes makeup. Include tight clothes, include nail polish, include perfume in the masjid. All this goes under beauty. And we are, why do we cover our hair? Why the hair? Because it's the most beautiful thing in the woman. Why you don't show the detail of the body? Because it's the most beautiful thing in the woman, period. You want to twist it, you want to go around it, do whatever you want. You know what I say to people? Just make sure you have a good excuse when you're standing in front of him and he's going to ask you. Is he going to ask me? Of course he will. Right? Hasib mi hisaban yaseera, ya Allah, please. Make it easy on me. He's going to ask me, why did you do that? Why didn't you cover your hair? Why pleasing people were more important than me? You better have a good reason. Period. If you think this way, if you think it is about you and him, everything become easy. I don't care what people do that there. I don't care what people does in college, what people does in the school, what people does in even in the masjid. I don't because I am going to be alone in this private one-to-one -one interview, and each one of us will have that, and I have to be ready. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him a righteous child. Ya Rabbi Ameen. And make him um, coolness to your eyes. Qurrata Ayn. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Bismillah. Let's see. That's in Arabic. Wa alaykum as-salam.
هل الموت مصيبة؟ لماذا لا أقدر على قول الحمد لله بعد موت ابني الكبير منذ حوالي شهرين؟ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, is um, death is a calamity? And why I cannot say alhamdulillah after my son died two months ago? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him jannat al-firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you jannat al-firdaus. Allahumma ajarha fi musibatiha wa khlufha khairan min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your calamity and re- replace your calamity with something better. Because we are human. We all have to agree on this. We are human beings. Death is the biggest one. Losing a beloved one is very difficult. Yani Rasul when he lost his son, what did he do? He was crying. Sahaba looked at him. Anta ya Rasulullah, you? And he was a baby. Right? Sayyidina Ismail. And he was crying. And he said, Hadihi rahmah. This is loving mercy Allah put it in the heart of a human being. However, لا أقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا. I'm not gonna say but what pleases Allah. العين تدمع والقلب يحزن ولا أقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا. The heart is in pain, the eyes is shedding tears, but we don't say but what pleases Allah. And what pleases Allah is, what do we say? الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. That's what he said. When a calamity befall them. They will say nothing but to Allah we belong and to Allah we will return. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. This is very difficult. This is so easy to say. But when, may Allah protect all of you. But this is not easy. However, I always say this to myself whenever the test I think is bigger than me. I said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. If Allah didn't know you can take it. He will not have tested you with this. Because we don't not all of us are tested the same way. Why somebody get cancer? Why a child get cancer? Seven or eight year old. I have always to say Allah is adl, Allah is just, and Allah is hakim, Allah is wise. And I don't see, just like I don't see the back. I have no idea. Same thing with here. I kept asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya sabur, sabburni, that's where I will say this. Ya Allah, you are a sabur, you are the patient. Give me patient. Make me not say anything but pleases you. You, sh- you should say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. All praise to Allah for every situation I am in. And the more you beg him and ask him, especially when you are in pain, that means your dua is granted. Dua is granted. If you are crying before you say the dua, he already gave it to you. As Sayyidina Umar used to say, and la ahmilu hamma dua لا أحمل هم الإجابة ولكني أحمل هم الدعاء. I don't worry about Allah answering my dua. I know He will, but I'm worried about me being in the right status or right state of asking. And may Allah make it easy. May Allah make it easy. This is really not easy. Subhanallah. I know a friend of mine. She lost her son at 19 years of age. يعني up till now she recovered. الحمد لله رب العالمين. Because Allah pulled her back to Him. And she literally, she, that's what she said. I met her two months, out, six months after the son died for the first time. This is what she said to me. She said, I, I had to be banged on the head to go back to her. Yeah, she, 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 this is what she said. If, you, if you've seen me before, you never believe this. The woman in front of you is this is the woman. He had to bang me. But this is when you turn the calamity into a blessing. Because if you turn back to Allah, you make dua for him, right? What else he needs? What else? And I have to say, he's in a much better place than in this dunya. Especially if he died as a shaheed, he died as a martyr. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you an opportunity to get close to him. Think of akhirah, don't think of dunya. If you keep thinking about him and the dunya, is going to be very difficult. Think about the akhirah. The people who were tested in dunya, this is, you read it in all the books, talks about sabr. When they see what Allah is giving them in akhirah, you know what they say? They say, I wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have bitten our skin with the nail clippers from the reward of the calamity. When you respond to the calamity the right word. 
And may Allah make it easy and make dua for that sister. Ya Allah, ربط على قلبها كما ربط على قلبي سيد أمي موسى. Ya Allah, hold her heart tight like you did with the mother of Musa when Allah took the Musa from her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, she, and he said it, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمُّ مُوسَى فَارِغَ And the heart of the mother of Musa became empty. That tells you what the mother feels when the child is taken away from her. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her patient, bi'idhnillah. Jazakum Allahu khair. Any last one question? Is that okay? Yeah, where is the uh, organizer? Is it because the, somebody's going to take me home, so I hope they are fine. Jazakum <laughs> Allah. Okay. Let's let's listen to the question, please. Now, nowadays, our youth, they don't want to get married. They are getting married with non-Muslims. Allah, that needs another lecture. And this is not a joke. This is real. This was about six months. This is absolutely three, three things these days. And there's bigger than this one. They're losing faith, leaving Islam. And they are saying it and you hear it. And if you don't hear it, then you don't live in this world. And this is number two. And the third one, which is the other big problem, and especially living in California. So this was about six, seven months ago, and I was in, we were in a wedding, a big, huge wedding. So I saw a woman who I haven't seen for ages, like at least 10 years. So I was telling her, how is the children? You know, and she said, they had grown up, and she said, my, my older son got married, alhamdulillah. And I said, oh, okay, and then the, the girl said, please make dua. And I, okay, and of course, to get me, but what did she say? Please make dua. That she marries a Muslim and a he. A Muslim and a he. You didn't even get it. And I said, you know what? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So there's many reasons why, especially professional women don't want to get married. Because what they see in the home. The misunderstanding the misrepresentation of Muslim married women, the, the influence of the culture around them. There's even worse than that. They want to do the other marriage. And again, because of the ages here, I'm not going to talk about it. But this is a huge, another huge problem. What do we do? And this is all the signs of the end of the, of the al-akhirah, exactly. It's when, when the family unit is being broken and you look around you. In my office, if I tell the patient, are you married? She looks at me. And I had a patient that said, and she said, absolutely not. I was like, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Did you see how things are changing? What we have to do? Especially for those of you who are now pregnant and, and going to deliver a baby, your children are still young. Raise them in their golden year, which is up to about 12 and even to 11. Teach them right Islam, not the Islam you grew up back home. The right one, the relationship with Allah. Don't ask them, did you pray? Ask them, what did you say to him? It's a huge difference. Did you enjoy it? How was the private moments? Teach them the right Islam. Otherwise, we are losing them right and left. Right and left. And they are marrying non-Muslims. You know, because what? I ask this. I get this all the time. Non-Muslims are better. They treat me better. I've seen what my dad did to my mom or I've seen what my did to my friend. And of course, we don't see the whole picture. We have no idea who's involved, unless you talk to the bo both sides, right? And then, don't want to be different. This is a huge problem. You don't want to be different. How many of you work in the real life here, real life? 
you work real life. Now, I'm not talking about you work in an Islamic school or you, I'm talking about you work outside in a non-Muslim, in these companies and, okay. How easy is this to be a practicing Muslim woman? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Right and left. So unless it is engraved in your heart and you see Allah, Wallah Allah, you see him in front of you all the time and you talk to him. And when you're so weak and we get weak, Ya Allah, make me stronger. It is not easy. And when they get to the 20s, the only thing left when you, when you put them in that college, the only thing left is the dua. Nothing else. Don't even waste your breath. Don't waste your breath. Just make dua. And, and I will say, and you be righteous, you be righteous, you be righteous. Because you be righteous, your dua will be granted. As Allah said in Surah Al-Kahf, we are going through a lot of problems as a Muslim ummah. Huge. I went to study 2008, came back 2017. I had my office, I had an office when I came back. Literally, I felt when I came back as it was, I was the people of the cave. Like 300 years, the difference in the culture in between Muslims. I'm not talking about non-Muslims, Muslims, Muslims. Things I've never ever even dared to ask, dare to ask. You name it, they're doing it. 45%, this is a real study from Illinois, 45% of Muslim college students, they have done everything that's in your mind. 45% Muslim students, boys and girls. Yes, why? Please forgive me, because we raise them on culture, we don't practice what we preach. And if we preach, we preach it the wrong way. Everything is haram or jahannam. And, and then what the easy way? I don't want it. So we, as again, the, the younger generation here, raise your children differently. But you can't give them something you don't have. If you don't have this connection with Allah, you can't give it to your children especially when they become a little bit older and you need to just talk with them. And a lot of dua, and may Allah protect us, subhanAllah. Ja'al Islam gharibah, wa sayaudu gharibah, fatuba lil ghuraba. As last thing I'm gonna say, Islam came as a stranger and will return as a stranger. And that's what we are seeing. Tawba lil ghuraba, place in Jannah for the strangers. Don't you wanna be a stranger? يا ربي آمين جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا